Welcome back to SIBO Mistakes. This is the series where I talk about the biggest mistakes SIBO sufferers are making and they are keeping you stuck. Stuck with symptoms like bloating, abdominal pain, abdominal pressure, and distension, that prego belly that bloats up when you just had like an apple? What the, what the heck is that? And it's also causing things like diarrhea and constipation. If you wanna be rid of these symptoms, I really hope that you watch this full playlist. Now let's get into today's SIBO mistake. And that is, unfortunately, SIBO diets. Now you'll notice I put that in air quotes for a reason. The term SIBO diet is very much something that the internet has come up with, and it's not actually substantiated in research. Actually, quite the contrary. The research that we do have on these diets suggests that not only do they not treat SIBO at all, that has never once been proven. Number two, they actually make things much, much worse. They lead to deepened states of dysbiosis. That is the imbalance between the good and the bad microbes in a community. They lead to states of malnutrition because they're gonna rob you or deprive you of certain vitamins and minerals and fibers and macros. And they dig you a deeper hole. Again, it's this metaphor that I keep going back to. You're digging a hole and you're complaining that you can't see out of the top of the hole and you can't climb out. But every time you do a SIBO treatment, you're digging that hole deeper and you're not even realizing it. And you have well-intentioned practitioners and well-intentioned people in forums handing you a new shiny shovel to use. But it's the same damn problem. It's again, it's the metaphor that I used earlier. You're shooting yourself in the foot and then you're complaining that your foot hurts. And SIBO diets are one in the same. Actually, they might be one of the worst ones on this list. You see, it doesn't matter whether you're doing low FODMAP, SCD, the Allison C. Becker combo diet, biphasic, or low fermentation. They all have their problems. But at the end of the day, they all share one major common problem, and that is that they are very restrictive. And by restricting, especially for a prolonged period of time, like I said, you're going to cause deepened states of dysbiosis and deepened states of malnutrition. And you're going to make the problem, the dysbiosis problem, much worse. And you're going to rob your body of the tools and the resources it needs to build a new healthy body, new healthy tissues, a SIBO-proof body. At the end of the game, that's what we're trying to do here. I could give a crap about treating SIBO. I don't claim to treat SIBO anymore, as a matter of fact. Instead, I focus on helping people build a SIBO-proof body. And then the SIBO can melt away when it no longer suits your physiology and your life. SIBO diets are not treating your SIBO. They are a symptom management tool and they can be used to the degree they are necessary. You see, the irony here is that let's take low FODMAP, for example, the most well researched of the SIBO diets. The people who research and develop the low FODMAP diet, Monash University, they know how to use this tool. And they are very, very clear. You're not starving SIBO. You're not treating SIBO. You are helping the patient manage symptoms with the instruction to reintroduce as many foods as humanly possible, as quickly as possible, while still maintaining the desired degree of symptomatic relief. And they're very clear that if the diet doesn't work and it's not alleviating symptoms, you are instructed to abandon the diet immediately and proceed to something else. But I've seen so many people stick with these diets for longer than they should or stick to the diet, even though it makes absolutely no difference in their symptomology, simply because they were told to do so, simply because they were fed the lie that these diets treat SIBO when they do not. If you need to do one of these diets for symptomatic management, by all means, do that for a few weeks until you can get your ducks in a row and actually do the things you need to do to feel better. But if you've been on one of these SIBO diets for more than, let's say a month and a half, you need to get off and you need to work with somebody or find the resources, find the tools to make that happen. And that needs to be one of your highest priorities because again, these SIBO diets are digging you a deeper hole. And look, I get it. This is a lot to digest. Pun totally 100% intended, by the way. This is a lot. You have been led to believe a lot of things that are probably false, 
let's just be frank about it. You sit on a throne of lies. And now it's like we're in the Matrix movie and I'm giving you the choice of the red pill or the blue pill. And I hope that you come and join me on this side of the internet, on this side of the SIBO universe, because frankly, I get results. I hear other practitioners talk about how SIBO is so hard to treat and you need to do this diet forever. And some people just always need antimicrobials. And this is a high relapse condition. And I think that they're full of malarkey. SIBO is not hard to treat. It's really not rocket science. When you understand the basic tenets of human health, and what it takes to make a human being healthy again. And you know how to coach people and give them advice and not break the bank doing it. So if any of this resonates, if you want something different, if you know that you need something different and you're looking for that transformation that you've been dreaming of, I really hope that I get to see you in FODMAP Freedom in the future. FODMAP Freedom is my group coaching program and I walk you through all of these SIBO mistakes and then some. But at the end of the day, my goal in FODMAP Freedom is to teach you how to build a healthy, strong, resilient, SIBO-proof, candida-proof, dysbiosis-proof, leaky gut-proof body and gut. And again, in doing so, we could treat, we could do it holistically, we could do so gently, and we could save your sanity and save your pocketbook in the process. So... I would be delighted and honored if you would consider joining me and my team in FODMAP Freedom. I know I can help you if you have the symptoms that I talked about in this video. And I just really hope that you will consider joining us in the near future.